Okay, uh, it's an honor uh, to give a talk today. Uh, I would like to share uh, some of my work in the past six months. Uh, I work with the, uh, the online uh, collaborative uh, learning platform, uh, Academy, uh, to provide a solution doing the uh, silicon validation. Okay. So, Okay, this is my uh, brief background. Currently, I'm teaching in three universities, Taiwan University, Tsinghua University, and uh, Yamin Jiaoda Universities. Uh, after I retired from my job uh, via technology as a CTO, uh, I have been uh, working on the PC industry for over 30 years. Yeah, I, in my past life, I designed all kinds of chipsets, and also the processor, x X86 processors. Um, before I retire, the uh, 12 years before I retire, I work on the system uh, area, particularly in storage system. I work on the computational storages. So I'm interested in uh, how to do the efficient uh, computing. Yeah. And uh, since uh, uh, I retire, I'm teaching in university, uh, the application acceleration with the high-level synthesis. And during the time I teach the high-level synthesis, I talk a lot of uh, system, because I want to accelerate applications, so there are a lot of uh, system issues involved. But most of the students don't have the, <laughs> the background on the system knowledge. So that's why I get back to the fundamental and teaching the uh, SOC design, starting from next semester, also in these three schools. I uh, also founded the uh, Bridge Your Life uh, Education Foundation, and the purpose is to bridge the technology training school and the uh, link with the school and uh, industries. Okay, this uh, agenda of, of my talk. First, let's talk about uh, why uh, cultivating IC talent and the IC system validation is, is so difficult. So let's bring to the uh, Google Open Source Silicon programs. So I'm glad that Aaron's uh, talk is before me because I already give you a lot of background uh, about my, my talk. And then I would like to uh, tell you about the FSIC development platform. Okay, this is based on the Google Open Source Silicon, uh, especially the Carvel SOC. Okay, and I will touch a little bit about uh, my future plans. Okay, first give you uh, uh, some uh, background. So we all know the, uh, the China and US trade war and the geopolitics issues. So in the world, uh, people try to establish is a semiconductor uh, supply chain and also aggressively develop uh, the design, the semiconductor talents. And Taiwan government also realized that and passed the regulation on the uh, industry university co-op cooperation and talent collaboration programs. So it comes that uh, they established the Institute of Semiconductor in these four uh, universities. However, uh, while increasing the quantity of the, the semiconductor talents, but how do we to improve the talents on its qualities? So that's a very critical issue. And also, uh, I would like to address uh, why it's uh, difficult to cultivate the uh, IC uh, design talent. Um, if we compare with the, the software open source program to uh, how the software talent is developed as compared with the, the how IC design talent. So we know that uh, to design an IC, you need uh, EDA tools. And the EDA tool is very expensive and not like a software just lead to uh, use uh, free compilers. And to make a chip, we need a lot of the IPs. Yeah, but IP is also expensive. You have to pay for the IP before you can start using it. Yeah, and so after chip is designed, you need to tape out, okay. So all those uh, difficulties, actually, uh, the Google Open Source Silicon come to address these issues, okay. And however, if you observe uh, this program and the industry move, 
the system validation, especially the system level validation, is not addressed. So uh, I'm glad that uh, in previous session a person asked about how the silicon is uh, is validated. So so my talk is mainly focused on system validation. Yeah, how to easily validate your chip. Okay. So this is a, a Google Open Source silicon program. So I, I don't I won't spend time because uh, Aaron already uh, talked about it. So Google uh, pay for the NRE and maintain the open source EDA too, okay? And uh, eFabris plays a critical role that uh, collect everybody's design and send to Skywater for manufacturers. In addition uh, to facilitate the IC design process and also to validate your design, eFabris provide a so-called Carvo harness. Okay, the Carvo harness is basically is an SOC. Okay, you have a user project in this area and integrate with uh, the SOC. And this SOC, the purpose of this S SOC is uh, doing the management with the uh, your user project. Okay. And so you can test your chip using the, uh, you develop the firmware and run in the risk file in the SOC to interact with the user project. So provide uh, uh, the validation of your design. And also there are, if you pay attention, actually this chip doesn't have a, a lot of IO pins, the total uh, 16, uh, 60 pins, okay. Um, Okay, and uh, we see that uh, uh, you have a uh, 38 uh, uh, MPRJ, uh, the, the basically it's the GPIO pins, okay. So you can communicate with, uh, with the outside, okay. That's uh, all it, it provides. And the user project is going to occupy two-thirds of the die size, and one-third is reserved for the uh, management SOC. Okay, so that's a very quick uh, brief on the carver harness. And so after the chip is manufactured, the chip uh, uh, will be sold uh, on the uh, daughter uh, ball, okay? And the daughter ball will be put on the, uh, uh, the carver board. And you test it through two ways. One is using the, you write the firmware and run in the risc file processor, communicate with the, uh, your user project, or through the 38 general purpose I.O. pin, and this I.O. pin can be accessed through a connector, okay, the connector here, okay, and so then you can pull on the uh, testing fixtures outside, connector, through the connector to test uh, your project through those uh, 38 general purpose I.O., okay, and those uh, pins has no bus protocol, it just dump I.O. pad, okay? So it's very hard that to do a computation accelerator chip because it needs volume data to come in all the chip, okay? So, so those uh, pins doesn't have uh, any bus protocol, so it's, it's not efficient at all. So you can test uh, very simple uh, designs, okay? So. So this program with this uh, Carvo SOC, it provides very limited uh, system validation capabilities. Okay, most, I, I think it's very good for analog circuit design. Okay, or oh, some simple design doesn't need uh, volume test data. Okay. Okay, the uh, system level validation is very, very crucial. Since I have been uh, in the IT industry for over 30 years, and I realized that uh, if a system, system validation is often the bottleneck of the time to the market. So if uh, the chip is not validated uh, completely and you push it into the market, and if uh, there's uh, any problem, they're going to bring a tremendous damage to the company. Unfortunately, the school does not teach it. Okay. Um, and it's very difficult to do the system level validation. Uh, one, there are at least a few reasons. One is the uh, designer does not 
design the necessary observability and controllability in the design because those designer doesn't have a system validation experience, so he doesn't know need to pull in the uh, test circuit for observability and controllability. Yeah, and also the most of the IC designer lack of a system operation knowledge. The system concept is uh, rarely teach uh, in the school. And, and also it's uh, uh, very difficult to build the system validation platform, especially in the university environment. It's not like a, a company that you have a dedicated system team. You, c you can design and manufacture your test boards. Yeah. But it's difficult for, for the school. Yeah. And I think the most crucial one is the system debugging is often by software means. Okay, so there is a common uh, concept that uh, the, the hardware designer really don't appreciate software. And also in the school education, they separate software and hardware. Okay, it's you rarely see any uh, engineer who process both software and, and hardware capability. Yeah. However, doing the system level validation, you do need extensive software capability. Yeah. So in my company, VR, so normally, I, I think there's a standard process, okay? The IC designer, after it's done, you hang over to the system engineer and software engineer. So software engineer doing all the system validations. Okay, however, the, the hardware design is a black box for software guys. So it's very difficult for, for software. And the hardware designer does not know how the software is tested for, for the system operation. Yeah, so when they design the hardware, they provide uh, insufficient hook for software engineer to, to debug his hardware. Yeah, so this, all those issues prolong the uh, system validation uh, time. Yeah, so that's why I, I think, uh, so in here, so in system validation, uh, we have to distinguish the IC testing and system validation. Okay, in today's in school, I think uh, most of university offer uh, IC design lab course. Okay, however, they only design, they go through the, the backend uh, IC design flows and they design an IP, okay? The IP never put into the system to test. How do you validate your IP? You use a tester, okay? And tester, the test program simply, you capture the simulation waveform and translate into a test, uh, test program and run in the tester. So the tester simply is to validate the manufacturer fault, to make sure the silicon behave as you simulated. And this is really not uh, an issue. In today's uh, semiconductor technology is so mature, you hardly see, or the PD, PD, PDK2 is also uh, mature, you hardly see that what you simulate does not match the silicon. Yeah. So this IC testing basically doesn't address the system validation. So to do the system validation, you see, you have to design the, a test board here. And the board has to connect to your system. Yeah, so there's a, a, a lot of trouble. Yeah, you need to design the board. And Aaron talked about people use the 3D printing to, to create this board. But how many people in school can access the 3D printing and design the board? Is it also time consuming to do all those uh, dirty works? Yeah, um, and also, you could not scale up the talent training, okay? So for example, if I want to train a thousand IC designer, can I, can I do this way? Yeah, no way, yeah. And also you cannot arrange a, a thousand designer come to your test lab, put into queue to, 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 do, uh, to validate your design test. So both ways are very difficult to deploy. Yeah. Okay, let me introduce the FSIC program. Okay, my purpose is design a program to train full stack IC designer. Okay, full stack here, I mean the engineer need to have the 
the uh, skill in the IC design, FPGA design, and especially important embedded programming. Embedded programming. And in today's school does teach students embedded programming. However, they use the existing uh, MCU board. Okay, you write some software. Okay, they call that the embedded programming. Okay. So, so when we talk about embedded programming, I mean that you have to do it in the firmware level. And the firmware has to directly interact with your hardware. Okay, and if you, you, you write the program using the API, okay, let's say you have a hardware, and then you have firmware, and then you have an OS, and then have, uh, after the OS, you have an API. So you actually develop your embedded program through many levels up. Yeah, so never get a chance to directly write the firmware to interact with your hardware. Okay, so I don't think uh, today's uh, school embedded programming course is why I mean embedded programming. Yeah, it's just uh, a little bit lower level application program. It's still application, application program. It's uh, above OS level, yeah. So I, I uh, very much emphasize the embedded programming. Okay, so to train students with these uh, techniques, I design a serious uh, hands-on lab based on the SOC level platform, okay? And thanks to the, uh, the Carvel Harness, the, they open source their SOC, so we can directly access our hardware, okay? Okay, that's uh, the IC validation platform, okay? In here, this uh, the Carvel chip, okay? And you have a user project area here, okay? To validate this chip, we put our uh, FPGA here. Okay, the FPGA in particular, we use the MPSOC. That means we have a SOC in the FPGA. Okay, the SOC can communicate remotely with the, the designer. Okay, and then uh, to facilitate the testing on your user project here, we develop several IP here, and also the IP on the FPGA side. So students can validate their design remotely, okay, using the, basically using the Jupyter Notebook and writing the uh, Python code. And the, they actually realize using very low cost pink Z2 ball. Okay, this, this PCB, the ball, a PGA ball only costs about 3,000, 4,000 NT. Very cheap. Okay, about 100 US dollars. And we designed a small module board with socket. Okay, so when the chip come back, we replace the chip and put into the socket. And this module board uh, connected uh, through the existing uh, IO connector. Yeah, so all we did is uh, we, we just designed a module board and with the socket on top of it. So students have the chip come back, they just put into the socket, yeah, and put in the uh, central remote lab. And students can access through internet, and internet using the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so that's uh, what you can see here, yeah. Okay. So we have, uh, so by doing that, uh, we can scale up the whole training programs. A lot of people can validate their chip. They don't have a, need to have a, a ball on the side. Uh, they don't need to struggle with uh, all the uh, software stack to bring out the software, the FPGA uh, uh, stack, all those things. They can start testing their hardware right away. Okay, so how, how we do that? Okay, that's uh, the following uh, development work is in the last six months, I lead uh, a group of about 20 collaborators from Academy. Okay, they are free engineering resource. <laughs> I don't pay, pay for them, yeah. So I, I, I teach them to do the IC design, and I come up with a, a real project for them to work on. So they use this project to learn the IC design. Okay, 
This is a Carvel APGA. Okay, this, uh, I have already introduced the Carvel harness. Okay, in here, we have a wish, look at the user project area. We have those interface. One is the wishbone. Wishbone is the interface that communicate the, the risk file to communicate with the user project. And we have a large analyzer. You can think it's uh, just general purpose uh, IO pin uh, for uh, risk file CPU to transfer data to the uh, user project. Okay. Again, the, user, the large analyzer doesn't have uh, any bus protocol. So use, you use a program I.O. to feed the data to the user project. So it's a very slow process. You cannot transfer mass, mass uh, volume data. And this chip doesn't have a DRAM controller. They have only very limited storage here. Okay, only uh, two f uh, 256 bytes of data. And there is no DRAM interface. Okay, so how, how do you get the, the data? To, to your user project. The only way is through the, uh, through the, uh, there's a 38 IO pins from outside. Okay, uh, as I said, those uh, IO pins just dumb IO, there's no bus protocol. Uh, yeah, so that's a cover SOC. So how, how do we do the Carvel SOC simulation? Okay, so this is your design. Okay, and you have uh, those, those uh, pins, okay. And you write the, uh, in the Vero environment, you write Vero test bench. Okay, inside the test bench, what, what do you do? Okay, first, you instantiate the Carvel chip. Okay, and then second, you load, you load uh, your firmware code uh, in here is a counter LA hex file. That's a basic compiler risk file, executable. And you load into the SPI, SPI flash models. And this model is going to interact with the Carvel chip through those uh, flash IO pins. Okay. And the next step, you release the reset. So once this chip, your design adds it from the reset, it starts fetching the code through the flash I.O. and read your code from the SPI flash memory, okay. And then the, 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 the chip start, start running and then the phone will interact with your user projects, okay. After it's done, either your design or risk file put the status on the GPIO pins and your test bench gonna to to read, okay, your test bench going to using the check bit to read uh, the pin and see if those pins show has the states match your, uh, your result. If it matches, then your test is passed. Okay, otherwise that uh, if uh, uh, over exceed the simulation time, certain time, then it fails. Maybe something hang inside uh, your design. Okay, so that's the uh, simulation environment. So our next step is turn this simulation environment truthfully to FPGA implementation. Okay, so this is the, the FPGA. Okay, this is your Carvel chip. Okay, uh, we port the Carvel design into the FPGA and we implement those uh, IP. Okay, those IP is very simple IP. For example, this uh, Carvel PS, this design only takes like a uh, five or six lines of uh, HS code. <laughs> very simple design uh, because uh, HS provide a lot of uh, facilities that uh, provide all the, those interface. So only, only five, six lines of code. Uh, it's very small for loop, <laughs> yeah. And this, this IP, is allowed you to oh, so allow you the, the your test token or the test bench code. You have to rewrite your test bench code from the Velo code to Python code, and this Python code run on the PS uh, on processor, and then uh, then it provides the uh, API so that uh, this API can interact with uh, 
uh, with this IP, IPGA design, to pass the, the pin signal state. And you can read it to read the, the, the pin status. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the other IP, like the re ROM call, is uh, actually perform the uh, XI master transactions to read your firmware executable from the DDR memory and load it into the, into the block run. Okay. And the SPI flash it originally uh, as I translate the behavior model, variable behavior model uh, into a, a hardware design. Okay. So that, that originally that's the SPI flash uh, behavior model. Okay. It's not synthesizable. But however, just modify the code a little bit. Okay. It can be synthesizable and put, and put into the IPGA. So this this module will interact with the flash I/O pin to read the data, the formal code from the block run to the uh, RIS file. Okay. So if you recall how the verification is done, and the direct translation is this uh, API basically talk to uh, the read room code uh, APGA design tell the uh, APGA design to do the uh, master cycle, XI master, to transfer data from DDR to block RAM. And then you control this pin to release the reset. And if it is wrong, remember that uh, the test bench will read the uh, NPRJ pin states, okay, using this API and interact with the, the IP design to get the, uh, the pin states. Okay, a as you can see, everything is done in hardware. Directly translate from the software variable simulation environment to the IPGA design. Okay. So what's the benefit of a carbon IPGA? So you can validate your design much faster at the hardware speed. Okay. And since it's run at the hardware speed, you can run real application on the PS side, okay, before you tape out the chip. Okay, before that, you have to run very slow simulation. You, you really cannot run the real application. Yeah, right now, since uh, it runs so fast uh, at the higher speed, so you can actually run the application. And also, you can use the APGA reach peripherals, okay, to communicate with the outside world. For example, the, the, the pink Z2 board has a network interface. That's why you can run the Jupyter Notebook remotely to access your APGA. Okay. The APGA HDMI, HDMI interface, you can render your display output and see it. The APGA has a, a lot of I.O. pins, so you can connect with your sensors. Yeah. Yeah, the sensor can get the data and feed it into your test chip. We have to run very fast. Okay. Uh, so the lab uh, platform, uh, okay, right now we are talking about the validation platform, okay, and we have a talk about this, okay, inside the user area, I embedded a few IP to communicate with the APGA, and this is the, the, the IP we implemented, okay, by those uh, collaborators in the, in the uh, economy, uh, and this is uh, your user project, okay. So when you tape out the user project, you put in those IP, and that's open source. And those design has cost very little gate counts, yeah. And you, so that you can design your user project using standard XI interface. That's very important. And in today's, uh, in the Carver SOC, you could not design your IP using standard XI stream XI interface. And with this uh, infrastructure, then you can design your IPs through the XI Lite and XIS to transfer the data. And this uh, standard IP can be easily and readily integrated with standard SI, uh, SOC design. Okay. All you need to do is get our open source IP put into the in your user project area. Okay, so benefit of FSI. Uh, so we use uh, this platform uh, to, to, to train the first-day IC designer, okay. 
And so you can, using this platform to validate the system and uh, application system level validation. And also, as I said, it's scalable development. Okay, so you, you don't need to design your board. And a lot of people can share the, the lab facility remotely. Okay, so through this FSIC, we realized the ultimate goal of Google Open Source Silicon, easy to design your IC. Most importantly, it's easy to validate your IC. Okay. So current planning is uh, currently, uh, yeah, uh, I led the uh, uh, 20 collaborators from Academy to develop this FIC, and we will take out this chip in November. So one uh, announcement is uh, currently we still lack of the user project. We develop all the IP around it, but this user project, I, I put very simple uh, FIR filter, but it can be put some more meaningful user project. So uh, if anybody would like to contribute on the user project and take this free tape out, this free tape out, but we, we are using Chipotle, we, we will pay for it. Yeah. And also, uh, th those uh, platform I develop will be used in the a course, SOC design in these three universities as a lab platform. So people are going to go through all the development process in this SOC design course. Okay, my future plan is uh, and see whether it can connect with the uh, employer, okay? Uh, let them to recognize or even endorse this uh, FSIC program. And I would like to extend to low uh, underrepresented people. In here, underrepresented means those uh, people who are not uh, WECS background. Okay, they are probably a mechanical, mechanical, a mechanical engineer or chemical engineer, whatever, okay? As long as they have a logical mind, okay? I think everybody can do the IC design, yeah. And I hope uh, that uh, this program can also extend to the industry on job training. I, I believe a lot of uh, the IC design house, the engineer they hire, they don't have uh, this uh, sound system knowledge. Maybe they can send their engineer um, in this uh, FSIC program. Okay, this conclude my talk, any question? Oh, yes. Uh, th thank you for your uh, uh, very impressive talk. And actually, you said that uh, uh, the PDK and the process is uh, mature enough to uh, n not, not need for the chip verification, but you need this, uh, system verification for uh, more so intel. Yeah, those are two separate issues. What is the yeah. uh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, I know. I am now the, the issue. Ah, okay. <laughs> now the PDK yeah. Sure <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but uh, the point is that uh, if you go with uh, open source ETA tools, uh, the tool is not so mature yet, I think, so that the chief verification is also required. So I want to make test vector or <laughs> something oh, like this. So okay. I, I think uh, it has to be hundreds of people yeah. using the open source ETA tools. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay, okay. Yeah, thanks. You, uh, I will stay here. Yeah, you can, you can come to me for any question. <laughs>